It's a very impressive looking future for this Arsenal team. You know, one man who broke into the Arsenal side to, as a youngster himself is sat beside me, Stephen Hughes. What can we expect from uh, this game? More of the same, hopefully. Well, yeah, let's hope it's another exciting game like we saw in the first two. The main thing for me is, is, is to keep improving the fitness, stay injury free. That's the main thing, the players stay injury free. They're working hard at the moment in training, double sessions. And I'm sure they're all play sort of 45 minutes, maybe an hour each. But uh, more of the same, they've been playing well, enjoying their football and what a fantastic stadium and pitch to play on today. Well, the manager has spoken of uh, their opponent's lack of ability to keep up with Arsenal's pace up front. And that has been a, a real facet of their play so far. And there is so much youth and vigour and energy in this Arsenal team. Yeah, very much so. And when you look at the bench there, you know, it looks an awful lot of youngsters. And, and they've, they've done really well in the game so far. They've made a real impact. I'm sure they'll be looking forward to getting on and, and playing some football tonight, which I'm sure they will do. Another great experience from this, a full house. Loads of Arsenal fans there and uh, I'm sure they're looking forward to it. And it's a really big occasion for Arsene Wenger. Of course, it's almost as big an occasion for Rio Miachi, who gets his first start here and plays in his hometown and in front of this magnificent crowd, a wonderful stadium. It will be a, a really special night for him. Yeah, very much so. And, uh, you know, I'm sure his family and friends are there as well. But I think it's important for him. He's got a big season ahead of him, really trying to make an impact. He's been on loan a couple of times and I'm sure he's desperate to make a big impression on the pitch and force his way into Arsenal's plans. And he's been harassed by people trying to get tickets off him, apparently. And uh, you can see why. It's a really big game, this, for the Japanese team and they've welcomed that man back for the first time in 17 years and he's a big fan of this place a big fan of this country and uh, it's about time he returned I think is the feeling well, two friendlies played already and now the players are on lockdown for their nine day stay in Japan there's an intense training camp double training sessions and fewer commercial commitments to interrupt the feeling is very much that this is part of the tour where it really gets serious for Arsenal. Yeah, I very much think so. You know, they're always going to be a serious side to these tours. Arsene Wenger won't have it any other way. I've been on tours with him myself. There's a lot of hard training and uh, you know, tires with the legs and, and, and the games are important as well. You, you know, you want to win this. And I think the hope this week as well is that it's when things really get serious in the transfer market too. Arsenal still waiting for that marquee signing that has almost been promised to the fans. Yeah, I'm sure there's been an awful lot of work behind the scenes going on. There still is now. And, uh, you know, everyone's patiently waiting for these signings, but I'm, I'm sure they're working hard, the club and the, and, and the people that do the transfers, and let's hope for some good news very soon. Well, Arsenal very much, of course, a possession side. And they've had most of the ball in both of their two friendlies so far. We'll have to see if that continues here against a fitter side. And it's almost like a cup final for these teams on tour when the big Premier League teams come over. And really... Uh, they should be as motivated as ever. I'm sure they will be, you know. Arsenal come and play in your hometown and you want to make an impression. You know, the Premier League's huge all over Asia, we see this. You know, it's a full stadium here today and loads of Arsenal fans in it. But it's an opportunity as well, for, you know, for the Grampus players as well to make a real impression. I mean, it's called a friendly for Arsenal. I'm not sure, so sure that Nagoya see it as a friendly. You saw just how much it meant to Vietnam when they scored that one goal, having been 7 0 down. <laughs> yeah, it was quite incredible. You know, the scenes when they scored and the way they celebrated it as well. It's fantastic to see the players celebrate like that. You know, the shirt came off and, you know, they thoroughly enjoyed that, even though, they, you know, at the time they were 7 0 down. You know, we saw how much it meant to them. Forward by Ramsey. This is Aaron Ramsey again. Just tried to spot the run. And Theo Walcott, who certainly has that in his game, he's obviously uh, made his feelings clear that he wants to play as a central striker. I'm not so sure that Arsene Wenger sees it that way if he's looking for the big name in the transfer market. No, and he was he was outstanding when he played wide right last year. It was a big season for him. Obviously, there's a lot of, lot of talk about his contract. You know, he's finally put that to bed. You know, he scored a lot of goals and got a lot of assists last year, and uh, he had an outstanding season. Let's just hope he continues that form this season going into it, and, and I'm sure he'll play wide right for the manager. And uh, you know, maybe in the future we'll see him. You know, take up that preferred you know, centre forward role he likes. This is Kieran Gibbs. Now Arteta. And Jenkinson. He said it's a really big season for him because he wants to get into that England squad for the World Cup. Riziki, oh, good ball in. It's taken just two and a half minutes for Arsenal to take the lead. 
And what a simple goal it was, but a fine header at the end of a wonderful cross. What a goal, what a start to the game that is. Fantastic cross, Thomas Rudzicki. Carl Jones just feeds him inside, and he just hits the right area. And very Drew pulls off the centre half, here we see it. Great ball, Thomas Rudzicki. Seven, eight yards out, and a really powerful way to beat the keeper. What a great start. And Livio Giroud, if you get the opposition, he can't stop scoring goals at the moment. I mean, it didn't really matter who the opposition was there because there was nobody around him, but that's only goal number six of pre-season in his, well, just the start of the third game. Oh, that's incredible as well. And, you know, there to see the pictures of Thomas Rzitzky, who, you know, deserves all the credit. All he did was pick the right area. It was a good run, very simple goal. But uh, what a great added finish as well from Livio Giroud. Man, you know, he's come back pre-season, he looks in great form. But it may just be that those uh, stories in the press and those promises of big name signings mean that well here we go again it's Walcott this time it could be two in the space of a minute and it could be a penalty and I think Theo Walcott certainly felt it was and the referee has let Nagoya off this time it was last dish tough again once again Thomas Rzitzki involved took a touch said Theo Walcott he just got back and, uh, you know, he just went inside, tried to cut inside there, walk onto his left foot, trying to curl it. We see him doing that numerous times before. Just got caught there. I think he did want a penalty, but um, I think the referee got that one right. Well, I think uh, I was going to say that the stories of a big name signing have motivated Giroud. They'll probably have the same effect on Theo Walcott as well. He was Arsenal's top scorer last season, 21 goals in all competitions. Giroud had 17. There's certainly something to work with there, even if they do bring in another signing. Yeah, very much so. We have got goals in, you know, in the team, all over the team, in fact. And, you know, we've just seen that on two players there who we both had good seasons last year. But competition for places is a good thing. And, you know, hopefully it'll raise, raise them players' you know, performances. Here's Walcott in behind again, in towards Giroud. And it had to be put behind. It's an Arsenal corner. And his team are in trouble. His team are doing rather well yet again. That's yeah, Gaffey Walcott down the right-hand side, showing great pace, just running in behind. Cut out easily by the defender there, though. Put behind by Tulio Tanaka. Arsenal could have had two already in the opening five minutes. It's Walcott's corner. And towards Mertesacker. Sanyu got there ahead of him, and it wouldn't quite drop for Giroud. And it's incredible, Bakary Sanyu. He's not the tallest. You know, he's played centre-half in the last game. Vietnam is outstanding. But he's got a tremendous leap. Just seen there from a corner, drilled corner, Theo Walcott. It rose really well. It looked as though Mertesacker took all the attentions inside the penalty area there, and it's not surprising, given his towering physique. Rosicki's ball forward, now Arteta, tidy play. Jenkinson, it stops really well this time. And that challenge really appreciated by the home crowd. Nagoya getting on the ball for just about the first time in the game. Nakamura. And they'll try and build from the back now. Tanaka. A useful looking ball. And Sanya watched it all the way. Ramsey. Ramsey and Rizitski combining. And this is Rio Miachi. Chance for him to open up his legs. Now Gibbs, steered away. It's almost just wave after wave of Arsenal pressure. It's going to be a really tough exercise for Nagoya. Yeah, start, start the game very brightly, moving the ball well, especially in the middle of the park, switching from one side to the other. It's a real interesting thing. Theo Walcott gets the ball, Rio Miachi, the full-backs are on. You know, road lap and he will see it again. And Gibbs has got in again. It's a good pullback too, and it's Rio. It's a whisker wide of the post, and what a moment that would have been for him. I think he thought he'd scored as well. Put his hands to his head. Once again, Kieran Gibbs acting as a left winger early on in this game. Goes down the line, cuts it back, drilled cross. And it just fell to Rio Miachi. Left footed, he's done the right thing, he's tried to hit it across the cross goal. And as you said, he's very close to making that two the, Shaves the woodwork. And, uh, I think from the reaction, you get the impression the home crowd probably want to see him score. <laughs> I think they do, yeah. And, uh, you know, you could tell he was desperate for it to go in as well. I'm sure he's got half the stadium there supporting him. 
you know, his family and friends as well. What a good start that would have been for him. Well, this is the way that Arsenal have been playing in their previous two friendlies. And they are capable of playing some beautiful football. We've seen that, of course, in the Premier League and the Champions League as well, even over those eight years when they haven't been winning things. And they play some of the most attractive football in the English top flight. The criticism, I suppose, that's been levelled at them is their lack of toughness. I don't know if you see that changing at all here. It's difficult to judge in these type of games. Well, yeah, very much so. I think the last sort of 10, 12 games, you know, we showed a lot of grit. And, uh, you know, there were times in, in them games when we were going for fourth place. But uh, we weren't playing particularly well. You know, teams all went to Loftus Road, QPR. We ground out a 1-0. We did it numerous times. So I do see, you know, a spirit, a bit of determination in this, in this team, definitely. Ayuma Tanaka. Back in towards the danger zone. And not for the first time, Sanyu is there. So back in. And it was deflected off Fujimoto. And wide for a goal kick. And it wasn't a bad effort at all by Danielson. It looked like it might have been heading on target. Yeah, I, think he, I think he was offside. Left-footed, it's quite a way out. Looked like could have could have hit the target. It's a decent effort. And Fabianski had a, a decent view of it. If it did reach the target, the only complication might have been if that deflection took it in towards the goal, but in an offside position anyway. And it's yet to be tested, the Arsenal goalkeeper. Nagoya have certainly shown that they can come forward. Yeah, very much so. You know, it's very difficult at times when you play against Arsenal. They keep the ball so well, but when you get the opportunity to go forward and, and keep possession, you've got to take that. And uh, obviously playing at home as well. It's a friendly game. They're going to want to make an impression and want to try and get back into this game. Jenkinson's cross deflected in towards Rio again. For the second time in a few minutes, the ball dropping to him in the penalty area. Excellent strength here. A wonderful play from Ramsey. And Arsenal win a corner. He does that really well. Um, Ramsey you know, sacrifices a lot, does a lot of work in and around trying to win the ball back. He's a very fit young man. He does really well here. Wins the ball back for his team and wins a corner. He built a, a very functional central midfield partnership with Mikel Arteta at the back end of last season. We started the last nine Premier League games together in the heart of midfield. It's Walcott's corner again. Rosicki just keeps it alive for Arsenal. Jenkinson. And here is Arteta. Well, he's had a very good uh, last three or four months. And the back end of last season was a, a key part of this Arsenal side as well, Thomas Rosicki. Yeah, very much so. You know, he's a player I like an awful lot. And, uh, you know, he's been plagued with injuries in his Arsenal career. He makes real impressions, you know, sometimes when he comes on in games and starts games. You know, in that position in, in midfield, he's got that acceleration still at his age, still real, got a good burst of pace. And he's creative, you know, he's always available. And, uh, you know, he's one of the senior players in the team. And, and the team miss him when he's not involved. Well, he only played ten times in the Premier League in the whole of last season, but he did start the last five games in a row with Arsenal winning four and drawing one. Speaks for itself for me. That stat there. You know, when he's involved in the team, you know, he's always eager, he's always energetic, he's a real heartbeat of the team when he comes in and plays. He's great on the ball, he's always available, he's always trying to make something happen. And uh, I think you know, for the younger players in the team, you know, he looks like a fantastic character in the dressing room as well. And speaking of being great on the ball, there was a wonderful flick there from Ramsey just a few seconds ago that brought oohs and ahs from the crowd. Huge football fans, those in this part of the world. And what they do appreciate is just seeing good play, and they will applaud the opposition team if they feel it's a, a piece of play worthy of that. And his team so often do play in that manner. This is Tanaka. And now, Tulio Tanaka. There are two Tanakas on the pitch at the moment for Nagoya. Tulio Tanaka, the number four, is a defender. And Tayuma Tanaka, the midfielder. 
Fujimoto. Nagoya just trying to keep the ball. Something that his team are so adept at doing. come again picked off well this time Kieran Gibbs now there's space for Arsenal to come forward Ramsey just tried to help it into Walcott who'd taken up that central striker's role yeah, you can see what he's trying to do there Aaron Ramsey you know, he's trying to Play a little one-two. He had a little bit more time than I think he realised in the middle of the park. He made a good forward run, supported Rio Miachi, who just fed him there. But in and around the box as well, he's a, he's a clever player, Aaron Ramsey. He's a good player to get on the ball. He's got a bit more time than he thinks. Maybe take a touch. And there's definitely been a, a visible improvement from him as well as over the course of last season. I think the run-in last season really toughened up a lot of the Arsenal young players and and perhaps gave them a bit of belief that maybe they lacked before and just sort of uh, it wasn't winning a trophy but it almost probably felt like one yeah I think so I think I think how the season panned out here is Walcott bursting away and then clattered from behind this time outside the penalty area decision didn't go his way but Arsenal do get a corner yeah, done well in the middle of the park there Theo Walcott gets the ball turns inside we see his acceleration you know, tried to use his upper body strength. He wanted a free kick as well. I thought he was quite unfortunate not to get one in a dangerous area. But we want him picking up the ball and turning and accelerating the people. That's where he's at his best. And the way Nagoya have put in a few challenges so far, it seems like it will be a, a good preparation for a season in the Premier League. They've been uh, quite physical so far for a, a Japanese team. Not really regarded for that type of play. Claimed by Narazaki. 37 years of age now, the goalkeeper. He's a man who's been at the top of the Japanese game for so long. He won the title with Nagoya in 2010. He was named as the league's most valuable player in that season. And around 500 appearances since signing for the club 14 years ago. He was also a member of the Japan squad for four consecutive World Cups before retiring in 2010. busy evening as Rio making the run into the uh, penalty area again and the way the opening quarter of an hour has gone it seems like there will be chances for Arsenal here's Rosicki a little ambitious that time yeah he did I think he just got a bit excited his first option I think he was going to play the ball out to, to Theo and then he thought he was a bit tight and he thought he might as well have a shot you see he gets the ball out of his feet it's a wild attempt from him in the end to come off the outside of his boot. We've certainly seen that Nagoya have the ability to come at the other end and trouble Arsenal, but I think the real test for them is going to be keeping Arsenal out at the other end. In front after just two and a half minutes, thanks to Olivier Giroud's sixth goal of the pre-season tour. Fujimoto's throw. And there he is again. A tough challenge from Ramsey. And yeah, that's what we want to see in these pre-season games, a work rate. You know, sometimes you know as a player you're only going to play probably 45 minutes, maybe just a little bit more, but you want to you know you want to get that feeling of tiredness. You're training hard, but this is what it counts, this is where it counts in these matches. You get real sharpness and match fitness is totally different to training, and you really see that Aaron Ramsey. No, he's, he's not seen this as a friend. His work rate so far in these first 17, 18 minutes has been excellent. He's been ever so energetic in the opening 17 minutes. Cut out by Murtasaka. And then here's Ramsey again. Arteta. 
taken off the feet of Giroud momentarily. Arsenal's pace has slowed slightly over the past couple of minutes. Nagoya seeing a bit more of the ball. To Nielsen, back to Tanaka. And he's a defender that's been at the peak of the Asian game for a decade now. It says everything about him, the fact that he has been in the J-League team of the season for the last nine years in a row. Nakamura, now to Nielsen. Tanaka finding Nakamura again. Put by De Nielsen to Tanaka once more. That's a lovely ball to find Hayuma Tanaka. A promising play from Nagoya. And I tell you what, that was Aaron Ramsey sliding back again. Never so impressive on the defensive end, but still the danger not away until Sanya intervenes. Last touch tackle as well with it back from Sanya. Just got back in time and they moved it well then. With a bit of a threat on this right hand side, real good diagonal. And then he goes just a little cheeky nutmeg on Perma, sack edge of the area. Back from Sanya read it. Great last ditch tackle from him. And the focus and determination levels of both Aaron Ramsey and Bakari Sagnia are, are to be admired in the opening 20 minutes here. Marquee signing might not have arrived just yet for Arsenal, but I think the talk of a marquee signing is just enough to add extra motivation for the players. Yeah, very much so. You know, pre-season friendlies in front of full houses like this, fantastic. You know, you really want to make an impression, and uh, you know, in pre-season that's what it's important: get your get your mind right physically, your body right, and uh, get yourself fit for the up-and-coming season. And we've got fantastic pre-season games and pre-season tour we've had so far. A number of the Arsenal players have spoken about their excitement of the players that are being linked with them. You just uh, hope for his sake and the team's sake that they do get a big marquee signing. Of course, there's no guarantee of it. No, there's not. And, uh, you know, everyone's sort of sitting here waiting here and reading the papers every day. And, and we're getting linked to an awful lot of players at the moment. But uh, I'm sure the, the club will be the first to, to, to release a statement as soon as that, that, that one of the deals is done. I'm, I'm sure they're working very hard on, on just not one marquee signing on a number of players and you know a lot of squad players left and the squad's quite thin at the moment so I think they're you know probably going for three or four targets. Now Nagoya trying to get in again. And again, it's Sanya who is in the way. Ramsey. Now Arteta. Nagoya have probably had the better of the last five minutes or so. Nelson Wenger won't want his team to take their foot off the gas so early on. It looked as though they'd be cruising to another huge win after just the opening three minutes, but certainly not the case now. It started so brightly. And I think it's become the stern test that Arsene Wenger was looking for. Stojkovic has been coach here since January of 2008, led them to their first ever J-League title in 2010. In doing so, he became the only manager in the club's history to better Arsene Wenger's second-place finish of 1996. Claims that the now Arsenal manager was a huge influence on his decision to pursue a managerial career. Midway point of the first half, it's 20 minutes since Olivier Giroud gave Arsenal the lead. 
After a lovely ball in from Thomas Rosicki. Yeah, it was a great start to the game you know, since then. Obviously, the heat and humidity as well when you're playing out there obviously has a factor as well. You can't play these, that tempo you know, the whole time when it's like this. But uh, still moving the ball around well. Arsenal, you know, this is, this is a good test for them. You know, and I'm sure at the moment, you know, the way the game's going, I'm sure Arsenal is delighted with this, uh, this test so far. Goyer on the attack again. Nagawa. Nakamura. Mata Nielsen. Tulio Tanaka. And Teta there, just to pick up the pieces. And that's a lovely ball. It's Rio Miachi in space here, just couldn't quite get there. And he is quick as well, Rio Miachi, so just couldn't quite get there. It was a good first time by Aaron Ramsey, you could see what he was trying to do, he just didn't quite read it. I think if he read where the pass was going, Rio Miachi would have been on that, in really dangerous position picking it up there. The danger, I suppose, for Nagoya in this situation is that they're good with the ball in this area of the pitch. As soon as they get into the final third, Arsenal seem to pick it off and they're so quick at counter-attacking. Yeah, I think we've seen that in the, in the previous couple of games as well. You know, when the national team's Vietnam, the media have had the ball. You know, as the game's worn on, you know, a lot of goals that Arsenal have scored have, have been in the second half and as the team's got more and more tired and they're on the attack and Arsenal uses their, use their pace. Here we see it again in wide areas. And no more able to use that pace than Theo Walcott bursting forward here in support. It was Jenkinson who tried to touch it back. And it was Tanaka who went sliding in. It was Giroud, I beg your pardon. Oh, it was amazing how it opened up. It was a 4v2. And here we see the referee's giving a penalty. You see it come Just back. Just look at that. It was Tanaka's hand. Yeah, it was a 4v2. I actually thought he chose the wrong option. Theo Walcott to go to his right. Aaron Ramsey was making a great run to his left-hand side. You can see what he's trying to do. He's trying to cut it back to Rio Miachi. The penalty awarded. Good break. And that's a real blow for Nagoya. And I think by the reaction of the crowd, it may be Rio Miachi stepping up to take the penalty. Well, it's Narazaki against Rio Miachi. And you could tell that without even looking at the pictures. And he scores! Rio Miachi back in his hometown and finding the back of the net and doubling Arsenal's lead. What a fantastic penalty. You know, he's obviously under a bit of pressure. He knows his family and his friends are watching. You know, he really want to make sure he scores this, but he keeps his head down, strikes through the ball right in the corner. What a fantastic strike from the young man. Good right penalty. He just arrowed it off the laces, put his foot right through it. And you can tell it means plenty to him. And it meant plenty to this crowd as well. And was that penalty harsh on Nagoya? There was a, a willingness to get the ball, the hand was outstretched from the body. I think he's going to be a bit disappointed, the defender. But the way it opened up, 4v2, you know, got to, got to take advantage of that. He slid in, he's trying to, he's trying to win the ball back. Olivier Giroud looks like he was just trying to flick it back because there was, wasn't enough weight on the ball. But he's unfortunate, he's just gone sliding in, he's come back at his hand and, and the ref deemed that to be a penalty. And it's still such a grey area. And it's in black and white, intentional handball, but so often it seems unintentional. And yet penalties are given. The arm has to be somewhere when you're sliding in. Yeah, very much so. And I think he, I think he, he you know, he's sliding in trying to initially win the first, the first ball through because it didn't have that much weight on it from Fear Walker to, to Olivier Giroud. And he's just sliding in trying to get something on it. And his arms are obviously sliding out, out behind him. He's cut it back, and it's unfortunate for his point of view. It, you know, it's just hit him on the arm. Well, it's come at a really opportune time for Arsenal as well because Nagoya were 
Starting to get more of the ball. Starting to uh, have regular forays into the Arsenal half. And it's a long way back for them now. Yeah, it's quite unbelievable as well. We're just talking about Arsenal hitting teams on the break as well with a lot of pace. Just coincided, it just opened up and it was a 4v2 situation. And uh, yeah, it was amazing because Arsenal have got great pace with the Walcott. We had yeah, all bursting forward. Aaron Ramsey made a great run late from midfield as well. It did look to be an inevitable danger. And you could just tell that the more Nagoya were coming forward, the bearer they were looking at the back. Arsenal almost lulling them into a full sense of security. Arteta. Trying to look down the right avenue again. Zitsky's ball slightly off the mark. Fujimoto. Good challenge from Arteta. It's Ramsey, the man who's been given the opportunity to run forward. Arteta holding back, Ramsey's ball into Walcott here. Now Gibbs. And Ramsey wants more. Tight footwork, he's away from two. And he finds a way out. Oh, done well there, great close control, Aaron Ramsey. Just like ran out of space. He looked like he was taking too many touches, but he kept, kept possession really well. It's Ramsey again. Now Rosicki. Tough challenge from Danielson, Colombian midfielder. Rosicki. Now there's two in the centre, Giroud's one of them, and Tanaka is there to cut it out again. And he's not best pleased with the efforts of his teammates around him and allowing such room to get the cross in. It's interesting, especially down that right-hand side. You know, with Cole Jenkins and Theo Walcott, you know, they're very eager when they've got a bit of time and a bit of space. Trying not to take the defender on, just to have a little look up, see where Livier Giroud is making his run and trying to find him nice and early. In comes the corner, the goalkeeper's made a decision to come and almost paid the price. Danielson. Nagoya just getting the ball away from their own penalty area. And uh, Sigo Narazaki was caught in no man's land a little bit there. Yeah, he was. He decided to come nice and early. If you're a goalkeeper and you decide to come, you've got, you've got to get it. And he didn't come out, he flapped a little bit, he was a bit unsure. And, uh, you know, that could have fallen to anyone, you know, in that six-yard box. Rizitsky burst away and was caught by his opposite number, Noshi Nakimura. Arsenal buoyed by that second goal, just starting to get on top again. we've seen so much inventiveness in this Arsenal team on pre-season even without Santi Cazorla Jack Wilshere still to play a big part as well that was better from the goalkeeper decided to come nice and early it's a floated free kick not a drilled one in in fairness to him he come and collected it well And the foul by Rosicki. Ball, the space for Nagoya on this side. Yuma Tanaka up against Kieran Gibbs. A nice touch here to try and find Fujimoto, and he's kept it in play. And Sanya there again. And that's possibly the closest that Nagoya have come to really carving out an opening. But Giroud, Arsenal showing their capabilities on the counter attack again. Walker, and the two just couldn't quite combine. 
for me, he just showed the wrong option. A great play Kieran Gibbs on his left-hand side, drilled it into Olivier Giroud, his first touch took the centre-half out of play. Kieran Gibbs carried his run on the left-hand side, he had Theo Walcott bombing on, he tried to try and you know, fizz it into his feet, so his touch takes him to the path he's running into, but just under hit the ball. Had a couple of good options, great first touch from him. And the free kick here goes against Arsenal. And Mikel Arteta. And a chance perhaps for Nagoya to get the ball into the penalty area. We had two number sevens clashing a few minutes ago, two number eights clashing that time. there to make the challenge again. Throw in for Hayuma Tanaka to take. And given away by Tamada. And here's Rosicki. Walcott's made a darting run. Look at the pace of Theo Walcott here. He's one-on-one. -on -one. It's Walcott. Good stop. Really good stop from Narazaki. Brilliant play. Thomas Rosicki again finding Theo Walcott. And how many times have you seen him one-on-one -on -one a defender? Beat him nice and easy. Come onto his left foot. He actually had Olivier Giroud just to roll it to him for an empty tapping, but you know he's run a long way. I don't blame being unselfish. Tried to get on the score sheet himself. Tried to cut it back. Credit to the keeper, good save. Theo's pace causes all kinds of problems. Almost seemed as if it was just asking to be lifted over the goalkeeper. He seemed confident enough that he could slot it past him. And now it's Nagoya on the charge and Fujimoto just leaning back. Opportunity. Ball goes wide, left-hand side. He didn't want to take a touch on the edge of the area there. Here we see it, diagonal. The left-back just finds him. He just wanted that roll so he could maybe hit it first time. If you take a touch, gives Arsenal defenders time to close you down. And in the end, another wayward effort from him. And Jenkinson had come infield, and there was plenty of space for Nagoya on the left side. Arsenal again, like it was a lovely idea. This time it was Ramsey going furthest forward. To Nielsen, lovely play from him, and now the field opens up for the Colombian. There's nobody coming to close him down. And the ball ends up in a similar place from uh, the shot from Fujimoto a few seconds earlier. Just got a bit excited for me, done really well in the defensive area. So good strength to get away from Mikel Arteta, strides forward. Yeah, we had a couple of options, didn't have anything clear cut for him to pass it to. You can see the manager a bit disappointed in his another wayward effort with his left foot. And they've showed some promise coming forward, but Fabianski's still yet to be called into action in 35 minutes. Now Giroud, Rio going forward, and the goalkeeper comes and closes it down. Another half opportunity, Rio Miachi comes in off the wing, he likes to make them runs from outside to inside. Livio Giroud tries to find him, just overhit the pass. There's been a really good interchangeability in the Arsenal forward line, as there so often is, but we've seen Walcott and Ramsey and Rio and of course Giroud in that centre-forwards position. Yeah, very much so, and I think they've caused you know, a lot of problems. So, you know, the Grampus back four, you know, they've interchanged well, come back. You know, Olivier Giroud sometimes dropped off, Aaron Ramsey's running beyond him, Thomas Rosicki's done the same. And, uh, you know, show good movement. And it's a real part of the modern game, and part of the modern game that Arsene Wenger's contributed so much to. We have formations nowadays, but rarely do teams stick to them. Giving away to Danielson. Sanya steps in and takes it away. Now Walcott with ground to run into. Really good challenge from Tanaka. He just tried to make one run. Olivier Giroud, then he tried to make another one. Really wanted to try and 
Ailey Napier walk on a one-on-one -on -one situation. Didn't quite happen, tried to flick it back inside. Good defending though. Tulio Tinaka again, high up the pitch. Sanya there once more. Looks to me as if he's got a future at centre back for Kerry Sanya. Played excellent there, I think it was Sunderland away last year. As a makeshift centre half, he can definitely play in that position. Obviously, well known to be a right back. But it's a position he can slot into. He's got a great leap. You know, he reads the game well defensively, comes in when he has to. And, you know, for me, he's definitely a makeshift centre half. He's excellent at it. That was a nice flick, and the offside flags up. Well, he is 30 now, Sanya. And lots of fullbacks do kind of gravitate into that central position the older they get. Certainly seems to have the attributes to be able to do that job going forward if called upon. Yeah, I think it's been an awful lot of talk about Arsenal after another centre half. You know, obviously, unfortunate injury, Thomas for Marlin. We're short on numbers back there. I'm sure the manager knows in the back of his mind as well. If called upon back, he can do an excellent job there as well. And of course, they've been strongly linked with Swansea's centre-back, Ashley Williams. Although uh, comments that he made on Friday indicate that a move could be off for him. There's still plenty of this summer transfer window to go. Mertesacker finding Rosicki. minutes to go until the break. Arsenal have uh, finished half strongly on this tour so far. And Teta, and just playing keep ball at the moment. Rosicki, and Teta planted himself in the middle of the park and he's spraying passes left, right and centre. Now Walcott, Jenkinson, and here's Mikel Arteta again. Rosicki touching it to Gibbs. Ramsey. Walcott's made a run and it's cut out. And he has been saved from going for a corner. Good defending from Shohai Aid. Rosicki turning into space. Didn't quite come for Gibbs. And Nagoya can breathe. Yeah, that's really good pa passage of play that from Arsenal. Moved the ball very well. And a real zip to the passing as well. Just didn't quite get that you know, important shot or cross off in the final third. Moved the ball well up to get into there though. More route one approach this time to find Rio Miyachi. Scorer of Arsenal's second goal from the penalty spot, midway through this half. Now Arteta does think about the shot, hit it low though. Into a crowded bunch of players. And that won't come for Rio. Oh, he just looks a bit tired there, Rio, trying to chase that ball a couple of times. I know how quick he is, they've tried to dink it over the top. Here we see his penalty again. What a great strike. You know, kept his head down, kicked through the ball. He stood no chance. Well, Arsene Wenger's had plenty to say about him before this game. To see genuine promise in that young man. He says he's got all the qualities to become a, a top player. Skill, trickery, pace. And uh, above all else, says Arsene Wenger, a great work ethic, which he attributes to his uh, country of origin. It's a, a part of the game that the Japanese players are, are well renowned for. Here's Gibbs. This was behind Olivier Giroud. I expect we'll see. Uh, a bunch of changes at the break. Yeah, I think so. You know, still very early on in, in pre-season, and uh, obviously, you know, a lot of youngsters as well come in and made an early impression as well. They'll be sitting on the bench there, going to be hopefully warming up at half time. Some of them come on. And I'm sure we're going to see most of them, most of the substitutions, at, you know, into the second half, and a lot of uh, a lot of changes. And the 
Goya would love to get one back before the break. And they've got four in the centre. And Fabianski makes what will officially count as his first save, although it should really have been a lot more difficult for him. Yeah, just opened up. Kieran Gibbs thought he was going to head it, then all of a sudden last minute wasn't going to make it. He had a bit more time than he thought. It was a Gower's header. Just didn't get a, a full and meaningful contact on it. Going to have a player down. And the Goya, I don't think, have spotted that. They're continuing to play on. Tanaka. Oh, lovely ball from Tulio Tanaka. And he deserved a whole lot better with the finish, really. It was uh, Agawa again who had that header just a few seconds ago. And he spurned two golden chances in the space of about 30 seconds. What a pass as well it was. She back Rishani looked peeling for offside. I don't think it is. It's a really good run. Benzo, what a pass with his left foot. Drilled in. Took both the centre-halves. Per Mertesacker and Sandy completely out of the game. And then he just, he, he was tired. He just swung wildly with his right foot. When it comes to the important part of his shot, Fabianski, easy save for him, but what a pass. And it seemed like a rush of blood to the head for Agawa, the club's top scorer in the J-League so far this season with six goals. And that was a heavy collision, and it's hurt both men. And right at the end of uh, the first half, Rio Miachi's in little bit of a better way but you can see why Tulio Tanaka's had 43 caps for Japan and he's had uh, a lot to do at centre-back today and done most of it admirably harsh uh, for Nagoya to give away the penalty midway through this half but coming forward he's been so confident as well and that was a delightful through ball to Agawa I have to say, Ogawa is their top scorer this season. He's not actually usually a goal-scoring midfielder. It's the first time he's got more than three goals in the last five seasons. He only managed one last campaign. And perhaps just a feeling that Nagoya's big chance to get back into the game has come and gone. That uh, was a great chance as well. You know, his first touch was good, but then he just got a bit excited, very wayward effort in the end for him. Well, that brings to an end the first half. It's been another promising and thoroughly entertaining first half for Arsenal. Giroud had them in front after just two and a half minutes. But Ryo Miachi with a penalty in his hometown midway through the first half, doubling Arsenal's lead. A special moment for him and what's a special night for him and his manager. At half-time, it's Arsenal 2, Nagoya Grampus nil. In there, he, you know, he's delighted. He scored a goal. You know, back at home in front of his friends and family, he's going to be delighted sitting there now. But obviously, the, you know, this is this is preparation to the upcoming season. You know, we've got taking a lot of players away with us. The likes of Lucas Podolski looks like he's might make way for him. Canabri's come on probably one side, so you know, it's four or five changes at half time. It looks. I'm certainly excited to see Gedi and Zalalem in uh, an Arsenal shirt, live and up close. People are raving about him. Doesn't turn 17 until the end of January. And uh, in each of the two pre-season tour games so far, he's played a delightful, dare I say it, world-class type of through ball. But not only that, we're excited to see a couple of the more senior players coming on as well because Lucas Podolski is here and Jack Wilshere, which will be very interesting as he continues his return from injury. A big, big player for Arsenal this season. Yeah, very much so. You know, we just want him to be injury free, everyone does. Obviously, with the national team as well, World Cup in last year. You know, he's a huge player for us. We just want him to fit back to the form we know he can play. And, you know, we've got a real class act on our hands here. Well, I know there is plenty of talk of big name signings this season, but you can see why over the past five years or so, Arsene Wenger has uh, kind of shunned away from that idea of signing players for a lot of money because there is such talent emerging through the ranks at Arsenal Shibitsu has just given the ball away he's a, a substitute for Nagoya and there's Zalalem's first touch 
And Podolski. Here's Lucas Podolski again. Now Jack Wilshire. Space on this near side for Jenkinson. Now Wilshire. Really tight play in the penalty area, and Podolski might come here. And then it was uh, a good opportunity for Gnabry. And Arsenal have started the second half almost as well as they started the first. Just couldn't get the ball out of his feet, Lukas Podolski. Jack Wilkes just into him. Here we see it there, he couldn't quite get it out of his feet. Decided to go Gnabry in the end. It's a real hash of it. Takes his first touch with his right, rolls onto his left. For me, he's got to hit that first time. You don't get that type of time in the area. Well, it looked to me as though Podolski was getting ready to pull the trigger and I think the defender coming in might have got the slightest of touches just to delay that. And if that was the case, then it was a vital piece of defending. Yeah, it was last ditch defending as well. It's nice to see Jack Wiltshire pick the ball up. Very intricate, nice little touch inside. You know, he's got great feet, Jack Wiltshire again. You know, he's, you know, he's good defend defensively as a midfield player as well, but he's outstanding as well when he goes forward. You know, he's got great ability. We've talked about those who uh, have come onto the pitch. It looks like um, it's Arteta, Giroud, Rizitsky who've come off. And we've got an attack here for Nagoya. That's good defending by Jenkinson. Masukawa. Fujimoto. And Danielson. Danielson running here. And breezing past Wilshire. And then winning Nagoya a corner. That's his, that's his real strength, Danielson. Powerful midfield player. Very leggy when he gets in his stride, then just showed his pace and power. Into the byline. Went past the midfield players, tried to cross the ball, one in team a corner. It's a powerhouse of a midfield player. So Nagoya have a corner. Early in the second half, a chance to get back in the game. It's a good ball in two. A really good ball. And Fabianski still not really called into a difficult save, but there was certainly danger there. And as Podolski, who got back for Arsenal, was tracking the run of Masukawa. Yeah, we see the ball into the near post. He's made a good run, got a little flick on. Not great marking, here we see it. Three Arsenal players around him still managed to get something on the ball. It was actually Kennedy who got the flick. Masukawa was coming in behind him. And here come Nagoya again. Ishibitsu, the substitute with another fine cross. And Fabianski perhaps called into his most difficult piece of goalkeeping all evening. And he's given the ball away here. Well, almost caught out. And what a shocking error that would have been. Josh Kennedy was presented almost uh, with an open goal on a silver platter. And it seems that between Fabianski and Mertesaga, they just did enough to deny the Australian. Here we see it, he's going to throw it out. It's called Mertesacker and he's just got a volley, he's just got an empty net and he scores. But he can't believe he hasn't scored. A confirmation of the two sides going across the bottom of your picture now. Wilshire and Zelalem and Nabry and Podolski have all come on. And the have had a really good three or four minutes here. more zest about their play. Tamada hit uh, Mertesacker. Oh, and almost given away a cane by Fabianski. Oh, start the second half much brighter. Nagoya in possession. They look much more of a threat going forward. And they're playing with so much more energy, it seems. And they can certainly afford to do that. Their next game in the J-League isn't for another 10 days. Nothing that's holding them back here. This is Jenkinson, nothing holding him back until uh, Ishibitsu got back to recover. Uh, I think that's where we see the best of Carl Jenkinson, when he's bombing forward. Little leggy right back, you know, he likes to join in, likes to attack fullbacks, you know, and he's very, very fit. I think that's where sometimes we see him, see him at his best when he's going forward. 
He played 14 times in the Premier League last season, all of them starts, but he didn't feature for the final two months of the campaign. And they'll want to play more this season, he'll want to be more consistent throughout the campaign, especially in the lead-up to the World Cup. And the chance of perhaps getting in that squad, an outside chance probably of getting in that England squad. Yeah, very much so. You've seen great... His World Cup skipping away, he's got three in support. And I tell you what, there was four in the penalty area and Wolcott picked the only one of them in a Nagoya shirt. Oh, I can't believe he's done it. He's done everything right, Theo Wolcott. Great one too, for Carl Jenkinson to get in. And then he's just got to pick someone out. You know, he's got his head up. He's just rolled it across the box aimlessly. He's just got to, you know, literally side put someone in. They've got to tap in to make it 3-0. He had too many options in a way. He must have played that pass without looking. Yeah, I think he did. I think he's just taking a touch, taking it past the defender and thought he was in. Oh, that's a wonderful ball and it's Walcott in again. And the goalkeeper stood up and made himself big and did get a touch. It's an Arsenal corner. And Theo Walcott has had two golden opportunities in the space of about 20 or 30 seconds. And this time it was a fine ball over the top from the back. Hit it well enough that time, but the goalkeeper was equal to it. Yeah, it's just one ball over the top. They're not dealing with that. Theo Walcott with his pace will get in all day long. Just couldn't wait under pressure. Good save from the keeper. It's a short corner from Walcott. This is Wilshire. Okay. Zalalem finding Jenkinson. Moved on by Zalalem again. Gibbs moving the ball out wide. A strong defending. And certainly an open looking second half so far both sides have had chances Zalalip 16 years of age and he has played some sensational through balls it's the vision he's had to spot the runs the execution to actually find his teammates but also he's so tidy in the centre of the park as well Now Navri turning away, he couldn't slide it in for Podolski. Yeah, he made a good little run then, Lucas Podolski just over hit from Gnabry, who's coming on the line. Zalalem, you know, he looks so composed for someone so young, 16 years of age, not intimidated by this at all, playing with first team players, full house. You know, he's really enjoying it, wants to get on the ball, wants to, you know, show everyone what he can do. And of course, we talked in the first half about Walcott and Giroud and the impact that all the players Arsenal are being linked to will have on them but Lucas Podolski as well now on in this second half had a very impressive debut season for the Gunners last time around and started by playing on the left finished by occupying the lone striker role Where, where's his future lie for Arsenal? I, th I think you know it's definitely after centre forward I think if he's going to play Lucas Podolski going to play on the wide left for me you know he had three games at the end of last year we needed to win and he, he done that centre forward role scored a couple of goals takes a bit of going into that position for me. Nabry again, he's away from two, wonderful play! Oh my! And it was almost a wonderful goal from the youngster. That's brilliant ability, that's what we know he's got. Gnabry cuts inside with great pace and power, it's one-on-one -on -one situation, bit of trickery, crowd enjoyed it. Skips past the second one to Nilsson, and he goes for the curler. He's not too far wide, but a really good individual effort from him. Well, all of these young Arsenal players have got talent, there's no doubt about that, but it's also having the confidence to try things like that. So impressive. Yeah, and these are the tours, the pre-season tours. You can come and really make a name for yourself. Wilshire, and the pass was definitely on there. Just about found its way through to Podolski in the end. Zalalem. There's one of those through balls. It's magnificent from Zalalem. And it's Theo Walcott who puts the finishing touch on the move. Well, he will take the plaudits, it will go down as a Walcott goal, but I tell you what, the pass from the 16-year-old Gedeon Zalalem was out of this world. Wow, it's like showing the eyes, it's brilliant ability from the youngster. And Theo Walcott, in fairness, knows how good the, the youngster is as well. He knows if he makes that run, he can find him. Good first touch from Theo, brilliant dink finish. But the ball through to him, Zalalem, not many players can do that. What, a, what an introduction to the second half, brilliant finish from Theo, in fairness. It was almost a carbon copy of the pass he played against Vietnam on Wednesday. And Arsenal scored from that as well. And he's been compared to Cesc Fabregas, and you can see why. Yeah, he's very composed on the ball. He likes the ball in the final third. You know, he, he waits for people to make runs. He sees other things, you know, other players and midfield players can't see. It's 
great through ball to Theo and uh, a really accomplished finish. And the shots we just saw there, and Walcott and Podolski almost just laughing to each other, thinking, how good is this guy? Maguire on the ball. And just confirmation that for the home side that they've removed Shohai Abe and Noshi Nakimura. And the players have come on at Yazuki Ishibitsu and Taishi Taguchi. Put out here. This is Ramsey. Nabry. Arsenal just slowing things down to a walking pace. Sanya finding Jenkinson. Zalalil. Couldn't slot it through this time, but wins the ball back. Now Jenkinson. Intercepted by Taguchi. And given away. Nagoya on the back foot here. And I'll tell you what, it opens up for Ramsey to take the shot. Unselfishly, he tried to find Podolski instead. That's lovely play from Ramsey. And Nagoya just had a, enough back to deal with the threat. Arsenal perhaps in danger sometimes of being a little bit too intricate, perhaps. Oh, I think he just chose the wrong option there again. Aaron Ram's done really well, won the ball back. Lucas Podolski made a really unselfish run around him, but he's got to use that as a decoy. He's edge of the box, there's no one there. He's just got to find him, he's just got to get his shot off. And he decides to try and cut it back, Lucas Podolski, and is easily cut out in the end. I'll tell you what, the game is wide open now. Just look at the space for both teams, and it's Walcott here to the back post. And he certainly met that well, Kieran Gibbs, but he could only find the side netting. Once again, he's like a left winger. We spoke about that in the first half. Kieran Gibbs bombs forward every opportunity. This time he does really well in fairness to keep this down. Theo Walcott crosses it. And when the ball bounces in front of you like that, it's very difficult to keep it down. And he's done that. He's done the hard bit. He's just come to the corner of his foot and gone wide. And the connection couldn't have been much better. He just bent off at the outside of his boot. We're going to have another couple of changes for Arsenal. Another youngster coming on. It's uh, the young Spanish defender, Ignacy Mikel. And Kieran Gibbs, who almost found the net just then, or did find the net, but the wrong side of it. And he's the man who makes way. already been on the score sheet in this tour. Ignacy Mikel scored the seventh goal against Vietnam. With a, a nice finish after good work from Thomas Eisfeld. And he's the most experienced, really, I suppose, of Arsenal's reserve team players in a, in a first team sense. Five Premier League appearances over the past couple of seasons. Zella Lea. Strength from Wilshire, Zellalem trying to turn away. Wilshire was caught, and that's uh, going to be a, a moment of real concern for all Arsenal fans. He's still down, Jack Wilshire. And Nagoya showing that this is not a friendly for them. And a good challenge from Mikel. And he's not been able to get the ball away. And that's a nice pass. And they've got two in the centre, it's a really good cross, and Fabianski pounced on it to deny Hayuma Tanaka, who was trying to head the ball back across goal. Oh, that was a great reverse cross. That just cut, took out Carl Jenkinson at the far post. Because it was a floated ball, he couldn't generate any power on it. Comfortable save there, Fabianski in the end, got down well. Nice and alive, hasn't had a lot to do in this game. Walcott. Nice pass, it's Wilshere picked himself back up after being injured and almost found the back of the net and it was another really good save from Nazaraki. Well, that's the only real surprise not ended up in the back of the net 
Makes a good run. He's onside. Theo Walcott finds a good first touch. You see there, Lucas Podolski ready for a tap in at the far post. Disappointed he didn't come to him. The Nagoya goalkeeper's made a couple of saves like that now. You have to say the one from Wilshire there and the one from uh, Walcott not too long ago. They've both been a, a nice height for the goalkeeper. Yeah, an experienced goalkeeper as well. You know, he's done that. You know, the Harbits well. The keeper, in fairness to him, a couple of one on one situations done well. Nikola Yakimovsky, the Macedonian attacking midfielder, has come on for Nagoya. As has Danielle, the Brazilian player. It's uh, Yoshizumi Agawa and Kiji Tamada who've gone off. Wilshire. Podolski trying to slide it back to him. Just a, a little more congested in the centre of the pitch for Arsenal that time. Arsenal trying to find a bit more space here. It's uh, available on this near side. Zalalem just operating in the pocket. Then uh, Wilshire had his pocket picked. This is Tanaka. And offside against Fujimoto. The number 35 we've just seen there, by the way, Taruki Tanaka, a 20-year-old, has also come on for Nagoya. So Fujimoto here, he won the ball back in his own half. He made a great run forward. He's gone for the overlap and he's, he's, he's offside. He should run 60, 70 yards. I'm sure he's hugely frustrated with that. Good run from him. And the disappointing thing is it's that position where you should never really be caught offside because he's looking right down the line. Ramsey. Arsenal will just play it out from the back as they're so able to do. And Zalalem gives the ball away. I don't think anybody's worked harder in an Arsenal shirt than Aaron Ramsey so far today. It's been a, a wonderfully diligent performance from him. Yeah, very much so. He's a very fit lad as well. We see that that middle middle area there. It's definitely a strong point. He played wide right a few times in an Arsenal shirt, but it's definitely more at home and more comfortable in one of the middle three. You know, he gets around the pitch, covers every blade of grass. He, he works right, you know, gets back as well. And, uh, you know, in this game as well, he's proved that great fitness levels. And here's Ichibitsu. Moved on by Fujimoto. And he gets it back here. Intricate play here from the Japanese side and Fabianski again has to pounce on the ball. And they're all waiting there to pull the trigger, aren't they? Trying to get half a yard. Jack Wiltshire done really well, read the pass into him, just took up his toes. And this is very unlike Arsenal. So route one and it almost paid off. And uh, Aaron Ramsey again working so hard. Just couldn't quite keep it in play. It was good defending in the end. And three Premier League titles, four FA Cups for Arsene Wenger. The last Premier League title in 2004, the last FA Cup in 2005. It's a three-time Premier League manager of the season, but not since 2004. It's been a, a long spell without success, or at least without what Arsenal fans would class as success, and that's winning a trophy. And there's just a little example of uh, why he was so highly regarded when he played under Arsene Wenger here back in the mid-90s. Yeah, I think the crowd enjoyed that as well, just showed his touch off, keeping it up with the outside of his, well, he's got a shoe on, and uh, shows he had a great touch, you can tell that. Certainly worth having to break out the shoe polish for. Here's Walcott in behind. And this time, Narazaki stood up. It was a tight angle for Walcott. Uh, he's getting in all the time now, Theo Walcott. All he's doing is making one run inside. This time, Jack Wiltshire. Lovely floated ball to him on the run. 
And the keeper again just done enough. We're approaching the midway point of the second half. And the Nagoya goalkeepers had to make a string of saves really in the second half to deny Arsenal extending the score. There's another change here for Nagoya. A magnificent stadium this. There's going to be an Arsenal change as well. The corner headed away. The th thing that surprised me about this stadium was it was uh, opened back in 2001. It wasn't actually used for the World Cup in Japan in 2002. Which seems rather odd because it's such a magnificent venue. And of course it wasn't here in Arsene Wenger's time as manager of the club. It just shows that they have made progression. And even though Arsene Wenger was here for just 18 months, it's really a testament to how well he did that they've been able to continue to build the way they have. And uh, a man who learnt so much from Arsene Wenger and Dragan Stojkovic, the man that's brought them their first league title. the ball around confidently here Nagoya there's three in the centre and there's plenty of Arsenal shirts back there as well here's Jack Wilshere Jenkinson offering the option out wide Arsenal intent on playing through the centre but Olski going to see uh, I think another Arsenal change and it's a double change another couple of young players coming on Akpom and Aneke and Chuba Akpom is only 17 years of age he scored three goals in two Asian tour matches so far got uh, a brace against Vietnam on Wednesday and uh, he replaces Theo Walcott who's had uh, a good game, but might have had a few more goals today. Yeah, I thought I'm sure he's thoroughly enjoyed himself. You know, he's got his goal, could have had a lot more. You know, every time he's making that run with his pace, he's got in. But, uh, you know, I'm sure he's thoroughly enjoyed it. It's, a, you know, 68 minutes under his belt this stage of the season, pre-season, pre I'm sure he's delighted with that. And Aaron Rams as well has got through an awful lot of work, so I can both sit down and have a well-deserved drink and a, and a rest. You know, pleased with their night's work. Yeah, invaluable preparation for the new season. It's been a really good workout for those two. There's another defence splitting ball, but the offside flag is raised. So he's just trying to stay onside that prom. As soon as he knows Jack Wiltshire gets the ball, he's got his head up. He's going to make that run. He can find you. Just gone a little bit too early there. Centre forward, he's come on, trying to make an impression. So nearly in a position to score with his first few touches of the game. Been on the field a matter of seconds. Dan Nielsen. Good vision, just didn't quite have the execution. Nagoya are 12th in the J League at the moment. It's below their usual standards. They finished seventh last season, won the title three seasons ago. But they have found a little bit of form recently. They've won their last two matches. They've actually scored in their last eight matches in a row. So Arsenal can't afford to take their focus off the game for the final 20 minutes or so. Vietnam scored late against Arsenal on Wednesday. And such uh, is the nature of Arsene Wenger. He's a, a football perfectionist. I'm sure that he would thoroughly enjoy Arsenal getting a clean sheet here today. Yeah, he will do. You know, going back to his previous club. You know, he's fondly remembered. I'm sure he's got some great memories himself. You know, but this is all about getting his team fit for the season as well. You know, seeing some old people is always nice, but when you go back to, to one of your old clubs, you still want to do well. And you know, I'm sure he's he delighted with this workout as well. It's, uh, it's 
it's been fantastic, you know, for the team at this stage of the season. Well, the very best managers always find a way to pick some kind of fault with their team's performance. It's never perfect as far as they're concerned. 14 goals scored over the first two games, make it 17 now. We won't have liked to have seen Vietnam score that late goal. And the Goya looking to find a late goal themselves. It's a good header, and they have done. Fabianski beaten. And Stojkovic celebrates. His team have scored a goal against his old mentor. It's a good goal as well. First time, good delivery down the right-hand side. He arrives late. Here we see it back here in the right areas. Gets his head up, he's got half a yard, and he delivers. For the first time in the game, the two centre-halves couldn't deal with it. There's a lot of bodies forward. That's a really good header. Fabianski had a lot to do. Couldn't quite claw it out with his left hand. And you can see what it means to Dragan Stojkovic. Kishi Yano. Heading a goal here with under 20 minutes to play for Nagoya. Fabianski got fingertips to it. Not enough to keep it out. And you have to say they've carried that threat, particularly in the second half. Yeah, very much so. You know, I think they've been a lot brighter, especially the start of the second half. They carried a real threat and had a couple of good opportunities to get on the score sheet. That one there, all, all, all about the final third. You get the right delivery in the final third, and you know, people, body, bodies forward. That's exactly what happens. A good chance. Credit to Yano. It's a great header from him. It's a good finish. It was very similar to Giroud's goal in the opening three minutes. Wonderful cross from almost the same position on the pitch. This time it was Tanaka, where Rosicki had done so well in the first half and headed home by the number 19, Yano where Giroud had done so well early in the game. But here come Arsenal, inside the penalty area again. And it's going to stay in play. It might have actually looped out. And it was Hayuma Tanaka getting back to defend that time. The man who was providing the ammunition at the other end a few minutes ago. had his big moment and a penalty kick that saw Arsenal go 2-0 up halfway through the first half and he'll be hoping perhaps for a few more goals in the final 17 minutes and they do have a corner hit and a good delivery the goalkeeper came again we've seen that a couple of times at corners you know, he likes to come really early. A couple of times he hasn't quite made it. The ball's dipped just before him. He looks like he's flapping at set pieces. Could be half, a, you know, half an opportunity arise from one of the one of the corners. Zellalem. Jenkinson dispossessed by Danielson. Danielson in a tricky position here. And did well. Podolski. Now Wilshire. Well, I think that tells us everything we need to know about Jack Wilshire. He's feeling OK. Yeah, I think he was a little bit disappointed. His ball over the top normally gets him perfect. A great reaction for him. First real 50-50. He's gone in full-blooded. He's picked himself up and carried on. He was meant to be a little bit behind the other Arsenal players fitness-wise because he had some screws taken out of his ankle. But he has missed pre-season for the last two seasons and if uh, he can get a few pre-season games under his belt this time around it will stand him and Arsenal in really good stead for the new campaign. Another change you see at the bottom of your picture there for Nagoya. Danielson's come off. And Iso Muir has come on. Arsenal certainly have shown themselves that they've got a, a promising base to build on for the new season. And I think they will add another name or two to their squad. And they've got uh, some real depth now, which has been demonstrated by the players that have come from the under-18s and the reserve team. 
for the first time in a long time it seems the club are focusing more on buying players in the summer rather than fending off interest for their own talent and that can be disruptive in itself having to do that we've seen that with Fabregas and Nasri and Van Persie and here they come on the attack again Nabry pulls it back and Podolski and Ike almost just trying to walk it in now Arsenal Zalalem there's another ball it's miraculous from Getty and Zalalem didn't get the reward this time Akpon threw on goal a little bit too tight for him perhaps but the ball from Zalalem again this is fantastic ability game from the 16 year old he's got all the awareness in the world and what it does as well the forwards make the run because they know he's going to find him they know he's got the ability to find him but someone's a young it's another example of it great weighted ball through as well and that probably will be disappointed he hasn't got his name on the score sheet there I mean, it looks to me as if we're watching a 16 year old magician and he looks a truly special talent yeah he does and he looks so young you know, I, know he, I know he's only 16 put no pressure on him he's got an awful lot of time to, to build up especially physically you know, he's got to improve physically and I'm sure we'll do get bigger and stronger but his technical side of the game is excellent and the final third you know he's got huge huge amounts of ability and he's showing that very early on and he seems to have all the uh, tactical awareness and vision in the world it's quite scary to think he's, he's naturally going to improve physically over the next five years at least yeah and I think the important thing I think that we all do is don't put any pressure on him he's still so so young in the game but uh, you know it's easy to get excited about him he's so young and we can see so much ability even just in these pre-season friendly games there's a few things he showed us he's part of his repertoire but the, the pleasing thing is as well is all the other players are responding to him they know he's got that much ability they've seen it themselves in training when he gets the ball in and around that, that final third he gets his head up and they make him run Theo Walcott done it in his goal he got his head up Akprom just done it then so when he gets the ball he takes a touch and he gets his head up he'll find you a couple of Nagoya's big players coming off Narazaki and Tulio Tanaka and the goalkeeper being replaced by Yoshinari Tagugi and uh, Tulio Tanaka replaced by Yazuki Muta well, they don't play for another 10 days Nagoya but I think the thought of the manager is just get everybody a chance to play against Arsenal and it is such a special occasion for them. And he's changed just about his whole team in the second half. Podolski. And he came. Now Wilshire. Wilshire trying to copy Zalalem. There's plenty of space over on this near side. Uh, Yakimovsky and Nagoya just didn't have uh, the vision or the ability to move it over to this side simple pass from Zalalem this time Podolski does well just to nick the ball away from a couple of players closing him down Jenkinson Zalalem turning into trouble. And the free kick given away. Zalalem spotted the danger coming from one side but wasn't aware of the challenge coming from the other. Yeah, he's taking a touch and he's just turned, turned into the player coming to close him down. But, you know, we've got to give him a bit of time. You know, he'll improve that side of his game as well. A bit of awareness in the, in the middle, middle of the park. But he's shown some great glimpses so far. Mikel done well for him in fairness. Come back, sense the danger. Come back with a full bloody challenge. Podolski. Now Wilshit. Nabry. And Danike. Right. 
Sanya. And Nabri again. Salalem closed down quickly. Seems that Nagoya have learned quickly about the abilities of this young man, and they're just trying to get as tight to him as possible now. Here he is again. Moved on by Podolski, and then Wilshire was trying to slide it through to Akpon. Yeah, the tempo's gone down in the game a little bit. Last five, five, ten minutes. You now since Nagoya scored, but it's nice to keep watching the team keep moving the ball. Jack Wilshire involved an awful lot, keeping the ball. Olin, it's, it's important that he gets his minutes under his belt. The more minutes he gets, the better. Well, the assumption is that they will add one big name over the course of the summer. If they do that, what can we expect from Arsenal this season? Well, who knows? You know, a bit of anything. If we continue the, the momentum that we carried on the end of last year, when we was in outstanding form, and at times not playing particularly well, but being hard to beat. I think that's what we've improved. That's Wilshire's ball. Wouldn't quite come for Akbom. And I think we've, we improved that. And, uh, you know, bring a couple of players into the mix. You know, who knows where we can end up, but... Uh, you know, we stand a, a much better chance. Obviously, we want improvement year on year. We want to be challenging for the title. And, uh, you know, two or three really good acquisitions. You know, and hopefully we won't be far away. Well, a big-name striker certainly seems to be the prerogative for Arsene Wenger. Strong links to Gonzalo Higuain and Wayne Rooney. A reported bid of £35 million for Liverpool's Luis Suarez as well. The danger, of course, is missing out on all three of those players. Brendan Rodgers seeming confident that he can keep Luis Suarez at Liverpool. Wayne Rooney now more strongly linked with Chelsea. Nabry. And again. play from Akpom, Podolski was there as well, just had his back turned to the action. Just so tight there. All the forward players just trying to engineer half a yard where he can get a shot away. Akpom there is taking a touch, he's tried not to move the ball, trying to curl it, you can see what he's trying to do. It's very congested, a lot of bodies there, difficult to do it when it's, it's that crowded. And we're just looking at that Ar Arsenal forward line, Arsene Wenger doesn't tend to play a 4-4-2. Olivier Giroud said he'd like Luis Suarez to join the club, said he'd love to form a partnership with him, but I'm not so sure I can see that happening. You'd have to imagine Podolski on the left and Walcott on the right, and then if there is a new signing, then playing down the centre. It doesn't leave much space for Giroud. Stayed away by Mertesacker. Oh. The boy is still going till the very end. Oh, I tend to agree, you know. If a new player comes in, I'm, I'm pretty sure the boss is going to change the formation. That's a good cross. Sanya was there again. You know, he likes his formation. He, he sticks rigidly to it. And uh, you know, whoever comes in is going to have to adapt to that formation. But, uh, once again, good good defensive play. Bakary Sanya, he's had another really solid game at centre-half tonight. Looks like he's going to play the whole game. And of course, uh, there are plenty of games to go around. Arsenal will compete in four competitions this season but whoever does come in as a, a star signing centre forward is not going to settle for a place on the bench they would have to be first choice and that would leave Olivier Giroud who's got six goals in three pre-season games would leave him on the bench and playing second fiddle of course there is a very good chance that Gonzalo Higuain could be playing at the Emirates soon of course at it might be with Napoli in the Emirates Cup next month. That's the only downside. Kalyanski with his body behind that shot. Oh, that was a tame effort, wasn't it? It looked like a three-on-three -three situation opened up. Didn't take advantage of that at all then. Nagoya. It's a real tame shot. Edge of the box. Nice, comfortable, safe from Fabianski. 
They've certainly had chances, Nagoya. And if you can level a criticism at them, it would be that when they've got into good positions, the finishing has been tame. I think they've definitely played their part in the game. It's been an entertaining game, especially for a pre-season one. I'm sure both, both teams have got out got a lot out of it. I know what they wanted out of it, but uh, from an Arsenal perspective, injury-free, we spoke about it. You know, you don't want any injuries in these pre-season games, and uh, thankfully, hopefully, with a few minutes left, that will remain the same. And the Goya are in again here. Ishibitsu just overhit the cross. Danger still not away for Arsenal, though. Yakimovsky. That's a go. That struck a player in an offside position. And what they have done ever so well is they've got players into the penalty area. They've not been shy in that part of their play. No, very much. They're a very fit side, especially when the ball goes wide. It's interesting. Two or three from midfield really try and bust the gut and make, make that box. Try and get some bodies in the box. You never know what can happen. That's the way the goal happened as well. Across the right-hand side, a late run in the box. Good header. Got them their goal. Will Shit. The ball nicked away from him. Really big 45 minutes for Jack Wilshire just to get that under his belt and continue his progression, preparation for the new season. The problem is, no matter what physical condition he's in, he never shies away from throwing himself into a tackle. And so often it has uh, Arsenal fans with their hearts in their mouths. It's just that type of play, you can't take that away from him. And there's Jenkinson from Wilshire's pass. Touched by Nabry. Podolski moves it on to Zalalem. He'll have a go himself this time. Not quite uh, executed with the same class as the through ball he played for Theo Walcott's goal. No, you know, they didn't close him down well enough for the edge of the area. He couldn't see any other options on there. Maybe Akprom, a little ball into his feet, might have been the better option. He's gone for the, gone for the curl. I can see what he's trying to do, but got underneath the ball. Tame effort. And 90 seconds of the 90 minutes remaining. Definitely seems to have been a, a harder workout for Arsenal than their first two pre-season games, and that's what Arsene Wenger wanted. That stage of pre-season when you have to step things up. Arsenal are going to face Urawa Reds here in Japan on Friday. And then uh, matches against Napoli and Galatasaray in the Emirates Cup next month. Then they face Manchester City in a friendly in Helsinki. And then the Premier League season kicks off on August the 17th with a home game against Aston Villa. Muta. Goya switching the play to the opposite flank. And his players in the centre again. And it was Yakimovsky rising. And once again, crossing the right-hand side. You at the right area we just seen here. He's had a little look up. Just floated it in, really. And the big centre forward climbs once again. Decent defending back, Sanya. Knew he gave away a little bit of height there, but got nice and tight to the centre forward. There was no stoppage time at the end of the first half. We're into stoppage time at the end of the game. It's been a few uh, nervy moments for Fabianski in the Arsenal goal. No Wojciech Szczesny today. Of course, Arsenal were linked with the uh, Julio Cesar early in the summer. Still remains to be seen whether Arsene Wenger will keep his faith in the goalkeepers that he's got at his disposal. Oh, 
One final push for Nagoya. And three in the centre, a fourth arriving. It was a free header for Yakimovsky, just leaning back slightly. It's again the cross from the right hand side, and again got bodies forward. They like they outnumber the Arsenal back four then at times. Fortunately, he had to come back the centre forward to try and generate any power. Really difficult skill. It looks like that could be it. Well, a good workout for Arsenal. And uh, another really beneficial performance. And they've given minutes to just about everyone. And the experienced players and the youthful players getting a little bit closer to match fitness. Giroud, early on in the game with a header, put them in front. Rio Miachi scored a penalty in his hometown midway through the first half. Walcott added a third in the second half after a wonderful ball from Zelalem, the 16-year-old. Jano headed one for the home team. And Arsenal have scored another three goals. The final thoughts of Stephen Hughes. I think it's an excellent workout. I'm sure the boss is going to be delighted, Arsene Wenger, with that. You know, better opposition, good pitch, going back to his home. He's at one of his old clubs. And, uh, you know, I thought they performed well, the youngsters.